Savina, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, I'm thrilled to be here and with you in New York, in the New York Exchange. How, how amazing is that? A lot is happening with Unicoin, uh, recently purchasing a mine in Argentina with cryptocurrency. As far as I know, that has never been done before. Uh, what is the reasoning behind that and some of the other moves that you're making regarding property? We are creating a cryptocurrency that is uh, like never that existed before. It's a fully transparent public reporting cryptocurrency that address the volatility of traditional cryptocurrencies. And the way that we address it is actually by putting assets behind it. So we started investing in companies through our sister company, Unicorn Hunters, investing in companies that have potential to become unicorns. And then we move into real estate and we invested in a copper mine, we invested in lands now in Bahamas, we invested in hotel chains in different parts of the world, including Philippines, because we believe that the assets are going to be more and more tokenized. I believe that pretty much any asset have the opportunity to be tokenized if it can bring value to, to the market. And we are seeking to connect the dots between the traditional financial system and the future that brings blockchain technology. How are you choosing the real estate? We make uh, uh, decisions based on different variables. One is we look at properties that can actually appreciate in value or that can become liquid uh, easily. So it's either liquidity or appreciation because the way that we go about this is to have a, a unicorn acquiring this properties or these assets using unicorns as the currency to pay for them. So we want the properties. So these properties are part of our balance sheet. So when the company goes uh, public, because we spend uh, all of our effort either building a brand or creating a solid uh, portfolio of, of assets, building the, the product itself, we have, we have a, a, the opportunity to, to tap onto these resources to participate proactively in the market. So we look for properties that are appreciate, can, can appreciate in time and can also become liquid. Does that give a level of stability when people hear cryptocurrency or coins? When they hear real estate, does that maybe uh, alleviate maybe some concerns for people who might be new? Well, absolutely. Traditionally, people will think of crypto as a very murky thing because crypto was murky. It was dark, built by anonymous people who are seeking anonymity, and it was highly volatile and highly unpredictable, and no one was accountable for that. So when we created the crypto, we took the long road, the road less transited, but we went to the SEC guidelines, we built a company that is compliant, and we said that people don't understand what crypto is, but they do understand real estate. So when you bring together blockchain technology and real estate, it's just a proposition that people can see, okay, finally a crypto that makes sense. And we're adding other assets, but I think the real estate is just the bricks, brings more like reality or like, you know, brings the opportunity for people to, to think, okay, now this actually have something behind and that something will help address the high volatility of, of the investment vehicle. How is cryptocurrency doing in Latin America right now? Latin America is a market that leapfrogged technologies, so it's quite interesting to see how fast, because the, there are many entrepreneurs that from Latin America build crypto banks, crypto exchanges, crypto-related products, but also they use uh, crypto as a vehicle to hedge uh, the risk against inflation, because inflation goes super high, like in countries like mine in Argentina, they are like skyrocketing and crypto is used for, for them as uh, a shelter for, for inflation. And in Mexico, one thing that it's also quite interesting, Elaine, Elaine is that women uh, embrace cryptocurrency quite aggressively, like 54% of the crypto holders are women. So women usually do not invest now, but when they invest, they invest in crypto, being crypto the second asset class after fiat that they, that they invest in. Uh, we know that El Salvador's president, uh, Nayib Bukele, who recently won re-election, made a lot of headlines when he 
decided that cryptocurrency, that Bitcoin would be a method of tender of currency in this country. How do you think that's been going? And do you think that he, that gamble paid yeah. off? Well, I think it pays off. He got reelected, right? So, and and the blockchain technology is, without a doubt, the it changed that has left the exchange, the the station. The future of money is uh, naturally going through through changes that started. Like if you think of the history of money, it started with barter deals, then it shifted to shells, to salt, to gold backing the the money, to the Federal Reserve, and now it's blockchain and blockchain with assets is just like a traditional expected evolution of something that hadn't changed much in the last hundred uh, hundred years and now needs to to live from and take it to the next level so i i believe that it will make access to opportunities uh, broader uh, if we do ethical transparent regulated Crypto, it will be a game changer to, to bring equality and, and opportunities around the world. You mentioned equality because we've been talking about presidents, women, but mostly people of means feel like they can be the only ones to take part in cryptocurrency. Is it for everyone? Do you feel that it is accessible to everyone? It's accessible because you can start investment with very, very small tickets. And the transaction process, the way that you get into investment is super simple. And this allows people to just test, to be within their comfort level. But I always say like investing is risky. So you shouldn't invest more than what you are willing to lose, especially if you are playing in this highly volatile, what we call generation one crypto market that do not have assets behind because Bitcoin has died 500 times. Now it's just like going up crazy and then it can go down and then, but it always recovers the value. So they need to be comfortable and, and do not invest beyond their, their abilities to, uh, you know, to live <laughs> comfortably without that because it, it can get risky as well, but it also brings opportunity. It's a bet, it's a gamble. Sylvina Moschini, thank you. As always, we appreciate your time. Absolutely, my pleasure.